Hey everybody, Zach here, and today I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm gonna make a video on how to spot a fake Klon. The Klon, as we all know, is one of the most sought after and iconic guitar pedals of all time, and because of that, there are fakes floating around on the internet, and I don't want you to get got, so I'm gonna try to give you as much information as I have for things to look out for on these pedals. I'm gonna grab the other camera, I'm gonna put this pedal on the bench, do some video, and show you the things that I look for when I'm checking out a clone online. And always remember, if a deal's too good to be true, it probably is. So let's get started. So one of the first things to look out for on these sort of pedals is the font. The font on a clone is very specific. And it's something that you just have to have looked at for a while to recognize. I hate to give away too much information because sometimes this can give the people who are trying to pass off fakes more information to make replicas to try to deceive people. But there are some things on this pedal that are really hard to copy. So let's just get into it. On the font, you'll see that they have this serif on all the letters. Now the serif is the little pip that hangs on the edge of the T and the R. And one of the things that a lot of fakes just don't get right is that serif. In addition to that, it's the color of the print. The printing is very dark. It is not, let's see if I can, it's not completely black, but a lot of the fakes do a very brownish oxblood, similar to the, the red Davies knob. These are indeed red from Davies, but um, well, that's what they call it. But the finish on the um, the printing is really close to the, the the red. And sometimes these knobs are not right, but you can get these knobs. So that's not that's not an impossible thing to fake. But that's one of the first things to look out for, at least when I'm looking at a clone online. Now, one of the next things that I look out for is the enclosure itself. Now, the enclosure is very specific. We all know this shape and have come to recognize the Klon Centaur box, but there's a lot of specifics about this box that some cloners don't get right. Now, again, I hate giving away too much information, but one of the things that's really hard to get right on these enclosures is are the finish, especially on the silver ones. Now gold, there's a couple different versions of gold Klon Centaurs and it's a little bit easier to kind of fake that, but still you're bound by the printing and whatnot to, to kind of prove its legitimacy. But on the silver ones, this enclosure is cast aluminum and it is not perfect. There's a lot of imperfections. There's a lot of weird things going on and you can see when I'm catching the light here, how imperfect it is. Now, to me, that's part of the beauty of this. But one of the things that you see on all these fakes is either they are a just raw aluminum case, which looks more like what we get when we are doing pedal enclosures. And you can see, you know, this is just a different style of aluminum, but a lot of times, you kind of get these striations. Can you see that? There's a little lines. I'll try to catch it on this other camera. That, see those lines? You see that on the fake clone, and you see it everywhere because it's part of the aluminum, it's part of the casting pro process. I'm not sure how Bill did this, but to me, it doesn't look like that. And it doesn't look powder coated either. There's a lot of silver powder coats that could look like this. I don't think this is powder coated. I've never taken a knife to it to definitively prove that, but yeah, they don't look right. And again, like I said, if something feels off, it probably is, but that's one thing you should always look out for. Is this the finish of the enclosure and all the imperfections? Clons aren't perfect. That's what makes them cool. Vintage guitars, we're never perfect. And that's one thing that a lot of people who try to fake bursts and things like that get wrong because they're trying to make things perfect. They were made by hand. 
even more so than things are today. Anyway, that's something that I always look out for. The font, the serifs, the color, and the shape of the enclosure. And one other thing that I don't have, because this is my, sadly, this is my only Klon, is the Centaur Man. Now, when you're looking at the Centaur, and I'll put some images up on the screen of a real Klon, the lines are really crisp, they're very defined and they're not too thick, but a lot of the fakes, and again, I'll throw this up on screen, have a really thick line around them. To me, all of the centaurs on the clon centaurs that uh, that are fakes, that have, you know, the clon right here, or the centaur man, rather, right here, um, they have really heavily weighted lines. Totally wrong. Doesn't look right at all. So... Another thing to look out for, and you can always go and look at old pictures of clones and compare them yourself just to make sure. But when we get to the inside, that's when things start getting really obvious. Okay, one of the last things on the face of the pedal is really specific. So I'm gonna try to capture this. All right, so you see that nut? It has a tiny, tiny little knurling, and that is very specific. A lot of the fakes don't have that because, you know what, they're not using the right switch. I'm not going to say what this is. Those that know, know, but this knurled nut is really, really specific. If it doesn't have it, unless it has a changed foot switch, which more than likely it won't, it should have the right nut. These are details. And let me crack the back open on this and we'll keep looking and break down the things to look for on the inside. If you ever buy a Klon, get pictures of the inside, okay? Trust me. I'm gonna take my handy dandy Jazz 3 and take the back off. I'll show you the label on the back too. But the back on these is pretty specific, but also you can fake this. You can fake the back. You can fake the sticker. Um, pretty easy to get that get that right. But let's drop the screw there. One of the things that the backs have that I think that everyone needs to kind of recognize is there's this bevel on the edge. All the ones I've seen have this. That right there. Very specific. Um, this looks like it's just some sort of cut aluminum plate. And they're not, you know, super clean. They probably were when they started, but but some of the tooling marks is, you know, a little rough. And, uh, you know, you have to remember too, these things, if they were old, they probably were taken apart. They shouldn't be too clean because this thing is gonna scratch. If I like really dig in with my nail, I can scratch this. The sticker, of course, mine has some, some Velcro on it is very specific, but again, that's easy to fake uh, if you if you really tried. But try to pay attention to the colors. It's kind of this reddish, oxbloodish print. Uh, the size of the fonts, the shape of the fonts, really, really important thing to look at. Now, we're getting to the nitty gritty. The guts, the gut shot, the thing that everyone wants to see. Guts of the Clon Centaur. So, and grab this other camera. All right, so the guts of the Klon, very specific. Now this switch in this arrangement is very, very important. Um, you want to make sure that that switch has the terminals on the side, the top, and the other side. Now I don't know specifically if Bill ever used them with all six terminals on the top. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't, but I know that all the ones I've seen have this sort of arrangement. And then the wires are always this fairly thick gray insulated wire. They have these insulated jacks on the in and the out with a very thin washer, lock washer in there. Um, the height of the jacks is like that, how much they're coming through. Now some replica jacks, the threaded part is a little longer and it'll stick through. It should be this height. It has a black plastic 1 8 inch 9 volt power jack that is wired up thusly. 
and the little eyelets and little terminals look like that. Kind of hard to see there. Let's see. There you go. But one of the things that most people always get wrong on these fakes <clears throat> pots. I'm not going to say what these pots are, but if the pots don't have this plastic thing in the back uh, printing on the, the top, um, then it is not legitimate. If they don't have that pot wired in that way with the legs coming through and this ribbon with the daughter board down there and the LED bent that way, then it is not a legitimate clone. Sometimes people get this enclosure shape on the inside wrong. <clears throat> so the enclosure shape is really specific. Uh, the way that the battery holder is cast is very specific. This screw mount is very specific. All of the geometry inside a Klon is this. It's always been this. It will always be this. Uh, another thing you need to look out for that I just remembered is the way that the output jack, there it is, wire is routed. It goes under the board. So does the 9-volt wiring. But I think that just about covers it. People fake the serial number and uh, all that. Uh, everything else can look pretty close. The goop typically is pretty specific how it's laid out, but they're all different because that's, you know, of course, it's a, never going to be exactly the same uh, from unit to unit. But I hope that these little tips, these little tricks, should be enough information for you guys to inform a decision about buying Klon. If you see one online, refer to this. In fact, I may post some pictures of this over on my website so you can kind of double check uh, the fonts, the serifs, the color. Um, one thing I didn't mention, the trademark sometimes can be a little different, different size, but that changed depending on the era of the Klon. So, your mileage may vary on that, but it's something to look out for. But yeah, I'll post some pictures so you guys can try to verify anything that you're looking at if you're planning on buying one. Because if you're going to spend any amount of money, especially the money that these are demanding these days, you need to make sure they're right. And um, always trust uh, in the images and uh, your gut. Because if things feel wrong, they probably are. At least that's how I operate. But anyway, I hope that helps. Uh, I hope you guys don't get got. You just go get because no one likes getting got. All right. See you guys.